On today's episode, we're in part seven of our series, Christian YouTubers You Should Avoid. This is going to be a full one as we look at seven more channels that seem godly, but they are not, and you need to know why they should be avoided. So are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's word. And before we get started today, please consider subscribing to our channel, giving this a thumbs up. And if you would, go to realtalkwithjordan.com and support what we do so that we can continue bringing solid content like this one to people around the world. So if you're not familiar with our series, we're going to look at a number of YouTube channels that on the outside seem Christian. But when you examine them closer, you will see clearly that they are not. So let's get started. First is Kurt Landry Ministries. This man is a wolf in sheep's clothing that constantly makes videos about things like the power of prophecy. Oh boy. Or how to see and hear in the spirit. I mean, that sounds amazing. No. He has over 100,000 subscribers and partners with false teachers that you will see in just a second. But first, check out how he was caught recently in making a false prophecy, which according to Deuteronomy 18 verses 20 through 22 is forbidden by God. Son of man, do you think that I am going to allow my prophets who prophesied Trump's second term and prophesied with all this goodness coming to this nation to be mocked? by a mass media manipulation. The Lord says, no, I shall not. For my namesake, I shall protect my word. I shall protect my people. I shall protect my prophets from this evil destruction. For I shall pull back the veil and I shall reveal that which is done in darkness. For they who shift the votes and move the boxes around, those who raise the dead and the dead vote, I will expose them, says the Lord. Lord, for they may be tricking man, but they shall not trick me, says the Lord. And the Lord says, son of man, prophesy unto Wisconsin that it will go red for Trump. Prophesy unto Michigan that it will go red for Trump. Prophesy unto Pennsylvania that it goes red for Trump. Prophesy unto North Carolina that it goes red for Trump. Prophesy unto Georgia that it goes red for Trump. Prophesy unto Nevada that it goes red, red for Trump. Prophesy for recounts in places where the corruption is there. Prophesy that the media will cancel the assignment to, to call the election. Now, Kurt should be glad that he wasn't alive back in the Old Testament times, or he would have been stoned to death for his false prophecy. But here he is celebrating his good friend and one of the worst false prophets out there today. Shalom, Rabbi Kurt Landry here. I am so absolutely excited that Dr. Chuck Pierce is coming to House of David. I'm more excited about coming up there. Yeah, well, I started inviting you. You don't even remember. Yeah. 1996. It's been that long. It's been that long. And finally, this year, I get to be with you, Kurt. It is such a blessing. I want all of you, you follow when we're going to be there. You be there. We're going to have Shabbat. And like Chris Roseboro has said many times on his program, when it comes to Chuck Pierce, nothing he says is biblical and is pure word salad. But here is Kurt Landry on the Sid Roth program. I mean... What could be wrong with that? Kurt, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to pray for healing. I know what's happened in your ministry as you travel with T.L. Osborne and uh, even after he's been promoted. But would you pray for physical healing for those viewing? Yes. And, and I, I want you to do something just as a step of faith. And I just want you to extend your hands and and you don't have to, but but I'd like you just to extend your hands because what you're doing is in the spiritual room, in the courts of heaven, you're saying, I'm ready to receive. So we need to extend our hands to receive from the Lord? What? Said no verse ever. Kurt Landry is a false teacher who twists God's word and makes false prophecies. Please mark and avoid him. Next is prophet Robin Bullock down in Alabama. This man is a few fries short of a Happy Meal and is extremely angry. 
He has over 205,000 subscribers and is growing rapidly. Not our partners I'm talking to, but people that want to just stand out there and just say, you're a false prophet, you're a false prophet, you're a false prophet. You wouldn't know a false prophet if he bit your kneecap. You wouldn't even know what it is. A false prophet is, is a prophet prophesying the beast regime coming into the earth. That's a false one. I'm not a false prophet. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. His blood is the only way to heaven. And he is God in the flesh. He went into hell, paid the price, rose again after three days and nights. He was born of the Virgin Mary and him and only him and his blood is what it takes to get you to heaven. And if you don't accept him as Lord and personal savior, hell is your home. Now, does that sound like a false prophet to you? Well, then shut up. Now, before all you keyboard warriors start sending me messages saying, wait a second, that was biblical. No. Hold on, because what false teachers do is they mix truth with error, and that is exactly what he did right there. I want you to see this. Let's play that back for you. And he is God in the flesh. He went into hell, paid the price, rose again after three days and nights. So did you catch that? I mean, does anywhere in the Bible say that Jesus paid the penalty for us in hell? No. No, absolutely not. The Bible is clear that Jesus took our sin upon himself on the cross and traded it with his righteousness, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. See, false prophets twist God's word, and they teach false doctrine. Sometimes it's a little more sneaky than others. But let's look at a false prophecy he made recently, because this man loves to say, God told me, or God showed me. Oh, boy. I was listening to the Lord before this meeting, and uh, this wasn't even on my mind, but this is the way it happens at times. And I turned around, and the news was on, and I saw Joe Biden on the screen. And uh, you remember this. I told you this. I said, uh, I looked around, and just out of conversation, I said, Lord, Joe Biden don't need to be president. And just like this, just like if you'd answered me, he said, he won't, just like that. <laughs> he said, he won't. And then he said this. He said, and after the election, now this is going to sound strange, but he said, the Democratic Party will go underground. And I don't think that, I, I don't know exactly what that means, but he said that they would go underground like the throne of Pergamon, the throne of Satan that disappeared and showed back up in Berlin. And he said, they'll go underground and then reemerge at a later time. Can you say liar, liar, pants on fire? This man is a fraud and the people at his church are having their ears tickled. And if you look closely, he allows his wife to be the pastor, which is forbidden by God in a host of verses. First Corinthians 14 verses 33 through 38. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. 1 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 7. And Titus 1, verses 5 through 9. He is waiting on. He said he's waiting on the precious fruit. He is waiting on us to know who we are in him. He is waiting on us to give the word and say, loose that and let it go in the name of Jesus. Some of you got family members you need to lose. Tell the enemy to lose and let them go. Your finances. So it is high time to mark and avoid the Bullocks and their fake church down in Alabama. Next is Charlie Kirk with Turning Point USA and Turning Point Faith with over 2.3 million subscribers. See, the problem with a lot of Christians these days is that they see an American flag and someone standing for our country and what they believe about God seems to just go right out the window and doesn't matter. Well, let me be very clear. It does matter. And we've got to stop giving them a pass. What motivates your typical woke pastor? I'm talking about the skinny jean type. What drives them into the ministry? Some are cowards and they took the job because it's indoor, doesn't require any heavy lifting. Some guys were overmothered and underfathered, and so they, you know, they, they feel at home in the church like they did in their mom's house. Some guys, they have church hurt and they're bitter and they're deconstructionist and they need to just get over their hurt and grow up and be a grown man. For some of them, they're just poorly read and they've spent more money on their wardrobe than they have their library. Wow, 
Talk about the pot calling the kettle black, but we'll get to that in a little bit. One thing you'll notice right away with Charlie Kirk is that he has very little discernment when it comes to who is of Christ and who is not of Christ. The proof is right there as he was with angry and controlling pastor and proven liar, Mark Driscoll. Now, I don't doubt that Charlie wants to protect our country, but is that a reason to follow someone when they are leading you to more wolves in sheep's clothing? Joining us now is Jensen Franklin. Hello. Long overdue. I'm so glad to be here. Welcome to the program, man. Thank and, you. Uh, just introduce yourself to the audience. You are one of the most influential pastors in the country. Well, I don't know about that, but I, I uh, pastor a church called Free Chapel. We are primarily in the state of Georgia, but we have campus in South Carolina, campus in California, and, um, and all over Georgia. Ama yeah, and I, I watch you almost every Sunday on Real America's Voice. Well, I'm very honored. Yeah, Thank you. And, and you, you have a real gift, and um, praise God. And right there, you saw Charlie Kirk with prosperity pimp and TBN star Jensen Franklin, who loves to twist God's word and make it all about you and what you can get from God. But it doesn't stop there. Um, I'm totally kidding. But he went around the country and in these open air revivals that brought thousands of people to the Lord. No. In the midst of the lockdown. And I started to get these messages from people and they said, Charlie, you gotta look at the Sean Foyt guy. So I endorsed Sean back personally when he ran for Congress in California and I was so moved by his story. And I started to see Sean attract crowds of thousands and then tens of thousands. And then I saw the opposition. I saw all of a sudden local governments try to lock him down. I saw the satanic response to what Sean was doing when everyone was supposed to stay at home. He was bringing people into the streets to go glorify the Lord. And Sean, you know, he'll do a better job than I will of actually talking about how this is not a political thing at all. It's about glorifying God. But guess what? Politics actually started to involve himself in his ministry because you had secular politicians that say, hey, you can go protest in a BLM rally, but if you're coming to go glorify God, you're not allowed to do that. And he was, the, the tour that he put on in the last year and a half, you should, it's unbelievable, one of the most ambitious, and one of the, and I'll say this, I, I will put him up against anybody, and I'm by no means know everybody in this space, but I don't think anybody worked as hard and did more effective open air revivals in as many cities as Sean Foyt did in the last two years, and it's a great honor to have him here tonight. Sean, get on up here. And you just saw Charlie Kirk loving, praising, affirming, supporting Sean Foyt who, if you don't know, is out of Bethel Church in Redding, California, one of the worst and most dangerous churches in America. Also, Sean Foyt was with Bethel Music, and he does fire tunnels and grave soaking and praises Bill Johnson. Yet Charlie just loves these guys and gives them a platform, which is the real big tragedy here because it goes against God's word. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are at the TPUSA Faith Pastors Summit. You can learn more at tpfaith.com. 1,100 pastors from across the country are here, and a perfect guest to join us for the entire hour, someone that I have known for years, and he is one of the most important voices in American Christianity. How about new? Lance Walnow. Check out his podcast, The Lance Walnow Show. <laughs> I check it on Real America's Voice on the weekend. It is excellent and honored to have him with us for the full hour. Lance, how you doing? Welcome to the program. I'm doing well. And how exciting to hear you have 1,100 pastors. Charlie, how is that different than when you started years ago trying to get churches to get interested in the future of America and conservative youth? And finally, you see Charlie Kirk praising and affirming Lance Walnow, who's one of the worst false prophets out there. Lance is part of the NAR or the New Apostolic Reformation and makes false prophecies and teaches false doctrine constantly. That's why I'm sounding the alarm because many people today, even inside the church, have no clue that these people are false because they do not take the time to test things against God's word, which we're commanded to do in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. So please mark and avoid Charlie Kirk and TP USA Faith. Next is Mark Driscoll, who you saw earlier with Charlie Kirk. Mark is a fired pastor who berates and abuses the members of his church. He has over 450,000 subscribers and he needs to be avoided. 
start getting prophetic dreams, God showing me the future. Uh, a gift of discernment uh, kind of comes to the fore for me. Not all the time, but I can see somebody and I just know their story. I remember walking up to people and I'm one woman telling her, you know, last night, did your husband grab you by the throat, throw you up against the wall, threaten you, and tell you that if you told me that uh, he would kill you? She's crying. She says, how did you know? I said, I don't know. I see it. I see it like a film. Go up to another person. Hey, I believe that you were sexually abused when you were young. Did so-and-so do this to you when you were this age? And, you know, did a comforting spirit come to you at that point? And a, a demon masquerading as an angel of light. And they say, yeah, how did you know? I was like, I, I saw it. I start having dreams. I start seeing things. I start reading people's proverbial mail. I did not know what to do with any of this. So God is supposedly giving this guy prophetic dreams and telling him about other people? <laughs> no, that is absolutely not happening. And Mark is a proven liar for doing things. And why does he do things for? For attention. Watch this. Whether you're putting him in his hands or whether you want to get him in the box, same thing. so we we took the books and tom took them into the into the um the church offices it uh, sometime sometime during this um and i i can't remember if it was right before or right after someone told me yeah mark driscoll actually it, it turns out he contact before he got on campus he contacted his publicist and told the publicist hey you want to send some reporters over here because we're about to stir things up over the strange fire conference it was a publicity stunt from the very beginning to promote himself, his ministry, his books. And so anyway, and that has actually been um, verified through some of his former elders who have also spoken of this. And, and to their credit, they've spoken of it with a kind of a contrite, um, you know, remorse that they were even involved in this little stunt to begin with. And they've described um you know from their perspective what's going on or what what happened that day yeah so all that all that happens later on we find out he posted on uh twitter i think it was security just confiscated my books and i'm like you gotta be kidding me <laughs> really that's how he spun this well you saw it right there mark driscoll is a proven liar who says one thing but does another no wonder he's been fired and bounces around from church to church. Next is false prophet Joseph Z, who has over 77,000 subscribers. Here's a little interesting facts about him. He claims that God gives him prophetic visions. He says that God guarantees healing. He gives false prophetic words. He always says, God told me, or I hear God say. ask you a question. Did God say this? No. Nope. God absolutely did not. And no, this man did not hear from the Lord. And notice how these people are cheering. I mean, why wouldn't you cheer when all you hear is that God is getting ready to prosper you? Woohoo! Who wouldn't want that? I mean, come on, you guys. God is not our personal servant. God is not a bellhop and he is not our ATM machine. But what he says in this next video is one of the craziest things I have ever heard from a so-called prophetic word. Watch this. 
I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, do not look at this with the eyes of the natural. Look at this with the eyes of the Spirit, for I am going to have an outcome no one expected. There will be a fiery outcome to all of this. This is going to be an overplaying of their hand, and it will surely be unto them. It will surely be unto them. It will be Haman's gallows. They've initiated their own demise, and the Spirit of the Lord is not, is not laughing at this. He is taking this serious. He is acting on the behalf of the righteous. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I have heard your prayers, for I am the Lord your God, and I need your cooperation so we can see victory. It is my will that victory comes, but I need your cooperation for this victory in Jesus' name. So God supposedly said that he needs our cooperation? What? That's a huge said no verse ever. Last time I checked, God does not need our help. He does not need our counsel and he does not need our cooperation. He does whatever he pleases. I mean, if he needed our cooperation, then he would not be God. But Joseph Z is promoting a wimpy lowercase G who cannot do anything without our help. And this should be no surprise, as he is a regular on the Sid Roth Show. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You are our most important guest. My guest here, though, is Joseph Z. He just wrote a new book teaching secrets about activating the unseen and angelic world to fight on your behalf. Few even realize the truths simply stated in this book. Angels are our servants of fire, but they only respond, and get this, they only respond through human voice activation and by you only speaking God's words. Joseph, you say angels are voice activated? Oh, that's right. So according to Joseph Z, we can just control the angels with our words. Wow, that's some real power. I mean, come on, I can just tell them where to go and what to do and they can come uh, sweep my back porch and vacuum my living room. That sounds amazing. No, this is absolutely nowhere found in the Bible. Psalm 103 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his words. Did you notice whose words the angels obey? It's not mine and it's not yours. It's the Lord's. Now this man is making this stuff up and you need to hear why. Because it sells. It gets him attention. And that is why we need to mark and avoid this false prophet, Joseph Z. Next is a dishonorable mention and it's Ascension Presents, which has over 1 million subscribers. Its goal is to promote the Catholic false religion and stand up for their heretical traditions. If you go to their channel, it's all about twisting scripture, making up nonsense, spreading false doctrine, and pretending that they are Christians. I have made several videos on my channel about how false Catholicism is. I'd encourage you to check those out after this episode. Last but not least is Greg Laurie who is a false teacher from Southern California with over 547,000 subscribers. This man teaches some biblical things, but he mixes in a lot of error because he is a prodigy of Billy Graham, who was a false teacher before him. Check out what he says right here. What about that? How could a God of love send someone to hell? Well, the simple answer is God doesn't send anyone to hell. We effectively send ourselves there. That is not a cop-out. That is an accurate statement. So according to Greg Laurie, we send ourselves to hell. <laughs> what? Absolutely not. This is not true. And many times in the Bible, you read how Jesus is the one who sends people to hell, or he summons the angels to come get people and cast them into hell. Not one verse says that people themselves throw themselves into hell. Greg Laurie also loves to affirm people and call them Christian when they are absolutely not Christian. That's incredible and, you're, and I know you're impacting a lot of young people here and you're just doing something for your community. Well, and it's not only that, but it's all Christian. You know, we're all Christian guys and uh, Lord told us to do it. 
So we just obeyed, that's all. It's so wonderful that you're here continuing to make great music and, and making an impact. And you're not ashamed to say that you believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, absolutely. You know, people talk about Alice being a rebel. There was never a rebel, more of a rebel than Jesus Christ. If you want to talk about a rebel, he was the ultimate. That's right. So did you just hear what I heard? So Alice Cooper is a Christian and Jesus was a rebel. I mean, who knew? <laughs> How about no and definitely not? Greg Laurie loves to water down and sugarcoat the Bible. And like his mentor, Billy Graham, he leads anyone and everyone in the unbiblical sinner's prayer and then proclaims them saved. Welcome to the family of God. This is pure nonsense. If you've never asked Christ to come into your life, you can do it right now. It's as simple as a prayer. God's only a prayer away, if you will. So I'll, I'll just pray a simple prayer. And if you would like to pray this prayer and mean it from your heart, God will hear you and Christ will come and live inside of you. Pray something like this. God, I'm sorry for my sin. I've broken your commandments and I've fallen short of your standards. But I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross in my place and to raise him again from the dead. I turn from that sin and ask you to come into my life be me my Savior and Lord. I choose to follow you from this moment forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I know it was a simple prayer, but if you prayed it and meant it, God heard you. And again, according to Greg Laurie, if you were sincere, then you're saved. That is a said no verse ever. Sincerity saves no one. Otherwise, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Buddhists, Muslims, they would be saved too because they're really sincere. I mean, they're sincerely wrong, but according to Greg Laurie, if you're sincere, you're going to heaven. See, the people in these episodes, they have the appearance of being biblical. But if you do not know the Bible and you don't test things against God's word, you can be fooled very easily. Oh, these guys sound amazing. I, I think I should follow them. No. So instead of coming on here and calling me judgmental or a Pharisee for telling you the truth, we need to do what God's word commands us to do. And that is to mark false teachers, avoid false teachers and expose false teachers.